Hi, it's Tom, and in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to modify our playing card class to add some useful features. Specifically, we're going to add a few static members to the class. So our existing class playing card is uh, relatively straightforward and fairly useful in a number of applications which might represent card games. So we use our class to instantiate a number of uh, playing card objects. Now these playing card objects uh, match, in terms of suit and rank, the standard uh, 52 card deck, which is uh, also known as the French deck. In our code, these uh, ranks and suits are both hard coded. Okay, so literally I create a constant string array and I list off the various different uh, ranks and suits that I want for, uh, for our class. And we can't really vary from these. The client programmer that's dealing with playing cards can't vary from these ranks and suits. Now here's something to consider. The standard uh, 52 card playing, uh, playing card deck that we're familiar with, or the French deck, has uh, clubs, spades, hearts, and diamonds, or um, there's also some French names for it, clover, pikes, uh, hearts is the same, and tiles. Um, this is not the only standard deck there is. Okay, So for example, uh, there's German, Swiss, Swiss uh, Spanish, and Italian decks, uh, which have different types of uh, suits. Okay, So the Italian deck, for example, has swords, batons, cups, and coins. So really, the, the suit shouldn't be static. Okay, It's really a, a variable. Okay, uh, We could create playing cards that have uh, a suit of swords, for example. Um, we should be able to do that. Another thing to consider are the uh, ranks. So in our current playing card class, there's no capacity to have special ranks like Joker, okay? because it's, it's hard-coded just to go up to King. Uh, also, another thing to consider is that some games, first off, some games will use Jokers, but other games will use some subset of the card ranks. For example, a very popular Russian card game is called uh, Durak, and uh, typically that's played um, by removing all the cards that are less than six. So the cards go from six to a high of ace. Okay, so that's different than, uh, than what we've coded our class to do. And then finally, there are certain games like uh, Uno, which uh, they have suits and ranks, uh, but they're completely different than the standard 52 card uh, deck. So really what I'm getting at here in, in total is that both the suits uh, and the ranks are really variables. Okay? These variables don't apply necessarily to individual cards per se, but apply to entire decks of cards. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify our playing card class and we're going to add two new uh, attributes. Uh, the first one is called rank list and it's going to be a vector of strings. Uh, so what this vector of strings will contain are the various different uh, ranks. We'll initially start them uh, from ace until, until king. Um, but the difference uh, is that it's not going to be necessarily hard-coded. We can actually change uh, what the different ranks are. We're going to do the same thing with suits. They're going to start off with um, the standard four suits in a French deck, um, but we can actually change them. So when we change them, change either of these things, again, we don't necessarily want it to just apply to one card. So for example, if I change the, um, uh, change the rank uh, list to include a joker, um, I want that. I want any card object to be able to be set to Joker. Um, so these two attributes that I'm going to define are going to be shared among all uh, uh, playing card objects. Um, shared attributes like this are uh, coded as static. And in my diagram here, which is a, roughly a UML diagram, I can see that these are static because they're underlined. Now, uh, the same way that you have static attributes, you can also have uh, static methods, which uh, would manipulate static attributes. Um, we're not going to be dealing with that in this course, but if you go on to the next uh, C++ programming course, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, do some of that kind of stuff. Okay. So let's look at what this looks like in memory. Uh, when our program loads that use the uses the playing card class, the actual class itself exists in memory. 
Anything that's static in the class, and I'm only focusing in on the attributes here, but anything that's static in the class, those variables will actually exist in the class. Okay, so a playing card, uh, the playing card class contains the suit list and the rank list. We could actually access these two attributes without ever instantiating an object. Okay, but uh, we can also get to them from objects as well. So normally from a class, we instantiate a number of objects. So in this example here, I'm creating card object one, card object two, and card object three. Not feeling very creative with my names here. Each of the objects contains what's known as instance members. And that is those normal attributes that we defined before, my rank, my suit, um, is face up. These are all attributes that were defined in the class, but really they exist in the object. And each object uh, has these uh, different data members independently of one another. So let's consider what would happen if I were to modify uh, either the suit list or the rank list, anything that's a, a static data member inside the class. So for the first example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the word um, spades to pikes, which is the, the French version of, of spades. So since the uh, suit list is shared, that means any card object that happens to exist, which has a my suit of zero, is now referring to pikes rather than uh, spades. Okay, and, and that's what I want to have happen. I don't want to have half of my deck saying spades and half of them saying pikes. That's no good. Okay, so it makes sense that uh, this list of strings is, uh, is in fact shared. Another example, uh, I'll modify the rank list by uh, adding a joker, um, a joker rank. Okay, so uh, I used to have 13 ranks going from uh, ace to king. Now I have 14, which means any card can now be set uh, to a my rank of 14. And uh, if I tried to do this before I had a, uh, a 14th rank, it would throw a uh, out of range exception. But now uh, it'll uh, simply refer to Joker and everything is good. So I could modify this rank list in any way. Um, I could put the ace at the end or I could uh, uh, trim off the first uh, five cards or whatever I wanted to do. The point is, is that I can actually modify these inside the class and uh, that will affect uh, all of the objects the same way. So let's have a look at uh, implementing this concept in our code. So in this version of the uh, playing card class source code, uh, what I've done is I've included the uh, library that will allow us to use vectors. Um, in the class declaration section, uh, I'm going to add the two static members. Okay, so I have a static vector of strings called rank list and a static vector of strings called suit list. I don't initialize them here. Okay, in other programming languages, we might be used to seeing that. Um, I just I just basically say that there are these two attributes. Now um, I've decided to make them public. Now this introduces a little bit of a problem in my class for practical purposes uh, because it can create a situation where uh, existing objects can become invalid uh, when I modify the rank list or the suit list. However, what I'm really focusing in on in this demonstration is uh, the use of static um, uh, static attributes. So we're, we're going to allow that little bit of a problem. It's not exactly bulletproof. I just wanted to uh, warn you about that. At uh, any rate, so uh, that's what the two uh, declarations look like. Now, in this example, the uh, two static attributes are vectors of strings, but they could be simple. They could be a, a simple integer or a simple double um, uh, appropriate to whatever class you're doing. The next thing I'll do in my source code is I'm going to modify uh, my accessors. Okay, so my existing accessors that uh, deal with the rank string and suit string um, are no longer valid, so I'm going to take them out. Okay, get rid of that one, and I'll get rid of that one. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify them. So they still return a string. They're still called get rank string in this particular case, or uh, get suit, suit string in this uh, particular case, but they're actually quite a bit simpler now. All they do is uh, return the rank um, at the rank list or suit list. Okay, so I've decided to uh, inline them. Okay, so uh, when I call get rank string, what it's going to do is return 
the string uh, rank list uh, at uh, my rank. Very straightforward. Okay, same deal with my soup. I'll scroll down to the bottom where I had my previous versions of those get functions, and uh, I'll remove those function bodies because they're no longer applicable. They're down here, way at the bottom. Okay, so where I had them hard-coded uh, to use arrays, I'm not doing that anymore. So I'll take these two out. Now, before I actually go through and uh, deal with my sets, I want to establish what the ranks and suits are, uh, at least initially. Okay, so um, up here at the top, I have again my uh, playing card class declaration section, um, followed immediately by main, which we'll go through, um, and then followed by my class definition section. In the class definition section, I'm going to actually add the static member initialization. So the uh, format for that, I'll just take out these comments here. Uh, the format for that is basically uh, I'm uh, almost redeclaring what my uh, uh, two static uh, vectors are. Vector string, it's part of the playing card class, so I have to put in the scope resolution operator in the name of the class. And then using how I initialize arrays, I just simply list, uh, in this case, what the suits are, and in this case, uh, what the ranks are. I've changed the logic slightly here, and I've included a position zero, which is not used. Um, so I no longer have to deal with the uh, offsetting the rank by uh, uh, negative one in order to uh, get the right rank. Uh, Ace, uh, which was zero in the previous uh, version, is now actually at position one, which is a little bit more convenient for me. Um, there's a cost to that. Uh, I'm using this space in the in the vector, um, which is not really uh, useful for me, but um, it'll it suits my purposes. It's uh, worth it to have that slight inefficiency. So next, we'll deal with uh, setting the uh, playing card uh, rank and suit. So I'll scroll back up again to where my uh, mutators are. Um, so void set rank, I still pass it a rank. Uh, void set suit, I still pass it a suit. So nothing changes in the um, uh, the declaration section, but I will have to make some modifications uh, to the actual function definition. So we'll scroll down and have a look at those. Okay, so here's my set rank. Uh, again, takes in an integer for the rank. Now, previously I had defined a constant for the maximum rank and the minimum rank. The minimum rank is still valid as uh, starting at one, and that just avoids me from using that not used rank. Uh, but I'm gonna take out the uh, constant for the max rank because we can actually add ranks um, or remove ranks uh, from the rank list. So instead of making that a constant, I'm going to make it a variable. So max rank as a variable now is the rank list size minus one. So every time I call set rank, it's gonna determine what the current rank list size minus one is. And that's essentially what the last rank is. So of course that changes my validation slightly uh, since I don't, I don't have max rank as a constant, I have it as a variable instead. Okay, so I'm still using min rank. Um, I'm using uh, max rank as a variable this time. And of course that's gonna slightly change um, the, uh, the string message if it's uh, out of range. So I'll just take out those comments and you can see uh, what's now happening in min rank as a constant, max rank as a variable. Uh, otherwise, the, uh, the method basically works the same way. We're gonna make those uh, same types of changes uh, to suit. So I'm gonna remove the max suit constant I'm going to add max suit as a variable, which is the size of the suit list minus one. I'm going to change my validation if statement to make use of that variable. And I'm going to change my uh, string uh, message if, uh, if it's invalid to make use of the variable as well. Okay, so the same changes uh, that I did before. But again, the basic logic of the uh, of the set suit uh, mutator uh, is the same. So let's 
test some of these uh, changes out in main. So I'll scroll up to uh, what I have in main here. Okay. Uh, in a try block, I create uh, card object one and card object two. Um, initially, card object one is the jack of spades uh, face up, and card object two is the ace of spades face up. Okay, and I'll, I'll display those two cards just so we have a start state. Okay, I'll pause and clear the screen. And then what I want to do is I want to make a, a modification to the suit list. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll take the suit list, so playing card colon colon suit list. I'm qualifying this with the name of the, uh, of the class. I'm not using the object to call um, this particular attribute. I could... Um, although it introduces a little bit of, uh, I could say, for example, here, object card object one dot suit list, um, but that would seem to imply that I'm only changing it for card one. Even if I use this code, it's still going to change it for all of the uh, uh, all of the card objects. Um, so for clarity purposes, I'm going to actually use the name of the class. So the suit list at position zero uh, was spades, and I'm going to change it to pikes. So I'll display the two uh, cards after I've made that modification, and uh, we'll see what that uh, looks like. Um, what I'll also do is, uh, just for the sake of um, uh, seeing the different suits, I'll uncomment this code. I've gone through a little loop uh, with a suit counter at zero while it's less than the suit list size, playing card suit list size. I'm outputting uh, the suit list at that particular position. So we'll see what that looks like. So initially, before I make the modification to the suit, it's jack of spades and ace of spades. Then what happens when I uh, change uh, spades to pikes and output the two cards, you can see because they share that list of uh, suit strings, now both of them are pikes, which is exactly uh, what I want. And when I, out, I output my various different suits, you'll notice it begins with pikes. So next what we'll do is we'll make a modification to the rank list, okay? And uh, the mo modification that I'm going to make is I'm going to add a new rank. So I've taken my uh, playing card colon colon rank list and I've used the pushback method of the uh, vector uh, to add the rank joker, okay? So now all of a sudden there's a new rank. I can modify the object, okay? Uh, I'll take object one and I want to set it to rank 14, which is the rank that corresponds with Joker. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to display uh, card object one's new rank by using get rank string. So we'll see what that does. I'll uncomment this code, which is again just a loop that goes through and shows me each of the, uh, each of the ranks. Okay, so we'll run that again. Okay, so as initialized, Jack of spades, ace of spades. Now it's jack of pikes, ace of pikes. And then finally, card object one is a joker. Okay, here are all the ranks. So mine still starts off at ace, but uh, you'll notice there's 14 ranks now. It goes all the way up to joker. Now, <clears throat> just to uh, demonstrate, I'm going to take this uh, line here where I added joker. I'm going to take it out. Uh, but I'm going to leave the modify an object and set it to 14 still in there, just so we, we're reminded what that actually does. So I'll run that program. Okay. So there's my suits. Um, and then when I go to uh, output or try to set it to 14, it uh, throws the exception, and that's caught by my catch block. Um, so you can see, without that adding that extra joker, um, it's still uh, thinking that the highest thing that it can set it to is 13. Okay, so um, that's uh, um, exactly what I want to have happen. I want to be able to catch an error like that. Okay, so that is uh, implementing static class members uh, inside of our playing card class. Thank you very much.